blue screen, a chroma key. So it's just like the weatherman standing against the blue wall and they insert the map of the U.S. and all the weather patterns behind the weather person. You can do the same thing here, just like you can do, you know, Studio I they have that big blue wall, but here it's just all built right into the system. So I'll, I'll do a demonstration for you of how we do that background. Um, so what we do, we go, so maybe on frames, and then we go file, load background, and then we have a few like stock backgrounds in here. Do that one. And then I do open. And then the next time I take a frame, well then over here I do use chroma key, and I set this for blue. And now, He's, he's up there. Um, now I need to adjust the uh, tolerance, or we may need to shut off the lights. Can we shut them off just a minute again yeah. just to show you that? Okay. We always get a better key when it's sort of just, just this light here that we're using. Um, so anyway, you know, that's, still, that's not a perfect key, but that gives you the, the idea that you're seeing the character um, in front of this image that we put in there. And you can even, so then as you, as you animate the character, we animate it against this background. And we can take that, and I could, I could stick this background on all these other frames too. You can also change the backgrounds even, you know, as you're shooting. You can also move the backgrounds around, you know, move it left and right. You can blow it up. So this is a really powerful thing to me because you don't have to necessarily create a whole lot of sets. It's all virtual, so it fits in great with, with your name. Now people could bring, they could, they could maybe make sets at home and just take pictures of them, put the pictures on a flash drive or whatever, bring it in, and then do some animation add whatever backgrounds they wanted um, as well. So the backgrounds is still picture, mm -hmm. not like a, not something that's already moving. Right. This th this wouldn't support a moving picture. Although you could take the background, you can, you can make it move. You can pan it. You can you can pan it using this software. Um, right. And the other thing I wanted to show you about this, you know, th this is the sort of tabletop where you'd have a figure standing up. But then this can also be used for shooting down. And if you've seen the studio eye cameras, you know that there are a couple of those that are just sort of permanently in this down shooting position. So again, you could animate, you know, objects, whatever, on a, I guess the blue background. Uh, I'm going to do a... Add clip, so this is going to start a new shot, and then just simply focus it, and then both. we can start shooting. Oh, got my hand in there. <laughs> now, see, that's so easy because all I got to do is hit, well, hit delete, and then retake the frame. Now, the other thing you can do in addition to the Blue screen, you don't even have to use the blue screen capability if you don't want to. We can work with these dry erase. Have any of you worked with the dry erase setup over Studio Eye? Okay, so basically let me just show you how that works. Let me do another new clip. And let's do both again. Okay, I'm going to make this a little darker. So we've got exposure control right here on the camera as well. And I'm just going to do a, a quick little drawing. First, I'm going to take just sort of a blank white frame. And then I'm going to do like a, a ball. And then erase it. And see, we're still seeing it because of the onion scanning. And now I'm going to do another frame here. And so, so let's start to see the motion we're doing. Another frame. Another frame. We're going to make 
can sort of squash down at the bottom. And I'm going to take another frame like it was a pause. And we're going to start animating back up and out. This isn't going to be exactly Walt Disney here, but <laughs> I'll give you the idea. And the kids really love this dry erase stuff. Um, this works really well, even with really young kids. They told me that, that they had a two-year-old in the studio out the other day who was doing this dry erase animation. That's about as young as you can push it. All right, and then now let's just hit the play button, and there's a little bouncing ball. So, you know, I've seen kids do well. There are a couple of teenagers who were uh, uh, sisters who were interns did a, um, a movie that was the, um, the Iliad. It was the entire Trojan War in 10 minutes, and it was all with this dry erase thing. And they had the Trojan horse, and they had all these soldiers coming out of the horse. It was just really ambitious, and they were like won a, a, an award in a film festival with it. Um, and it was all done using this dry erase thing. Another thing that the kids like is using this uh, little human figures that, are, you know, that you get for artists. And this is real good for just sort of training you how to, you know, do animation, figure animation. So again, you just take a frame and move them around. And they'll, what they'll do is they'll take the characters and they'll do little thought bubbles and have them speaking back and forth to each other, do all kind of neat stuff with adding backgrounds of the characters. Um, so, you know, this is meant to be able, the camera's meant to be able to put in virtually any position you want to put it in. I mean, you could even turn it toward yourself and animate your own face frame by frame, which I'm sure kids will do. Um, the light is, that's, that's an optional thing, but it helps just give you kind of you know, more even uh, lighting. And you can put the backgrounds in, you know, we have three different positions. Kids who want to spend a little more time with their sets, they could even have a background back here and then in this slot put maybe some trees and in this slot some houses or something so they could have a, sort of a dimensional uh, background. Um, anyway, that's, so that gives you sort of the basics of it. Do you have any questions? I can try to explain. Well, I know that you said you have this and then you have iMovie and iDVD. Right. Mm -hmm. Which program controls like? This, the rate, the frames per second? Oh, that's a good question. That would be here. Um, this has a really neat feature in that, okay, like right now, let me go back to the first clip. Uh, well, the, the ball clip would be a good one. Um, okay, so now I'm playing it, it's set for two. That means we're playing, each frame that I took, we're playing it back twice. Um, and, you know, since the standard rate is 30 frames a second, we're playing it back at 15 frames a second. Now, if I change it from 2 to 4, it's going to play each frame back four times, so it's going to slow it down. That's a little too slow, in my opinion. If we change it to 1, it'll play it back every frame. Frame will be played back just one time, so 30, full 30 frames a second, it'll really fly by. So that's a nice feature of this. You can control that. And then whatever setting you do it at, once you, you just do file share and tell it to export as an iMovie, and it'll go right to iMovie, it'll open up an iMovie, and you're ready to go. Now you can do some editing in here, just like the rearranging of frames. I think you can reverse frames, play them backwards, those kind of things. Uh, you can't do any sound in this program. You can do your sound in the uh, iMovie. And, and there is, there's a library of sound effects and a library of musics, music on here. Um, and then you can do real nice titles, you know, the sort of moving titles that um, 